Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to go over one of Magnus Carlsen's games after a long time and since it's Saturday, so I'm going to do an instructive game analysis as always. Uh, I chose this game because the Grand Chess Tour has been going on in Croatia and I went to see it live one day. Uh, I have to say I felt a bit like a 12-year-old girl uh, looking at all of those uh, people whom I've been watching online for, for a long while and it was a great experience. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring in my phone. They don't allow you to do that. You have to leave it in front. But I still got to see uh, all the players play. And Magnus Carlsen uh, drew the round I went to see, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, throughout the tournament he's been playing incredibly well and I'm absolutely astonished as to uh, how well he's been able to perform and uh, well he seems to be at his peak in my in my opinion much better than even than in 2014 uh, when when he's considered to have been his highest strength. So anyway, he's leading the tournament in clear first. I really expect he's going to win without too much trouble. He's his play, his style, and his concentration seems to be absolutely incredible. And that is why I chose uh, one of his old games uh, from more than 10 years ago. And probably my favorite game of his, firstly because he played a move which I... I hope I'm going to be able to see it one day if it happens in my game, but I doubt that I will ever be able to play it. Uh, he played an incredible move, which we are going to go over. And secondly, because it's in the variation that I play. Uh, he played against Levon Aronian, and after d4, Aronian played d5, and they played the semislav, which is my main defense with the black pieces against d4, and Aronian actually played bishop b7, which we are going to get to. Okay, so c4, c6, knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, e6, this is now the semislav defense. Now, two most popular moves for white are either e3 or bishop g5, pinning the knight. Magnus Carlsen played e3, which seems to be uh, the most popular option and uh, probably objectively a better move. You're not locking in your bishop uh, because as soon as you play bishop g5, e3... Uh, is too slow and you don't have time to play that. As soon as you play e3, your bishop can no longer get out. And bishop g5 lines lead to crazy uh, variations after h6 and sacrifices and stuff like that. Anyway, after e3, the main move for black is knight b to d7, simply developing the piece. And now what black, what black wants to do is expand on the queen side uh, once white develops his bishop to d3 or to e2. Now, if the bishop goes to e2, then the same variation doesn't really work and isn't applicable. But after bishop d3, which is the main move, we now have this semislav uh, meran variation uh, with d takes c4. And after bishop c4, a tempo on the bishop with b5. The bishop can retreat either to b3, to e2, or to d3. All three variations are completely different. And once I cover the theory on the semislav, I'm going to get into that. In this case, bishop went to d3, uh, which is the most popular move. So this is still very well known. I've played this maybe five times in tournament games, uh, at least 200 times in blitz games. And now black has two main moves, either a6 or bishop b7. And a6 is, uh, well, the old main move, um, considered to be better. The point of it is that you want to play the move c5, but you don't want your b5 pawn to hang. And if you don't play c5, then your c8 bishop is going to be dead for the rest of the game. And the other move is bishop b7, preparing the move c5 as well and preparing to develop, develop the bishop. I still prefer the move is a6, but bishop b7 seems to be the more precise way to play. Anyway, after a6, if a6 has been played, uh, white can then use the opportunity to play e4. And e4, c5, d5 or e5 are the two moves here. Uh, either the old variation or the Reynolds attack with d5. And these are, in my opinion, more fun to play uh, than bishop b7 lines. But after bishop d3, Levon Aronian chose bishop uh, b7. And bishop b7, as I said, is, according to theory, more precise. And here there are three moves. And uh, this is the first surprise, in my opinion, that, that Magnus Carlsen played. Uh, two main moves, uh, which should be objectively better, are castles and d4. After castles, uh, white now continues with a6. 
And now we have e4, c5, the same variation that you would have after a6, with a slight difference, d5, and now queen c7, and the variation goes on. This is still theoretically heavy, uh, at least 10 more moves of theory. And the second most popular move after bishop b7 is e4 immediately, trying to punish black. So after e4, b4 uh, is one option uh, that black would choose, and in my opinion, it is the most aggressive move, and it should be played. Knight a4, c5, e5, knight d5, castle cd4, rook e1, and the variation goes on like that. Uh, this is sometimes called the weight variation. And what Magnus Carlsen chose after bishop b7 is the third most popular move, and probably... Uh, the least active move, but it does a great job of stopping uh, black's queenside play with a clear purpose of trying to fianchetto your bishop uh, to the b2 square. Okay, so he played the move pawn to a3. After pawn to a3, uh, that's still provoking the move b4, that's clear enough. So b4, uh, and after b4... What can you do now? If you take, the bishop is going to take and black is going to be better, so that's not a move that's usually played. Uh, probably the only move played here is knight e4. Knight takes e4, bishop takes e4, and now the move b takes a3. And this is the first point at which you see uh, Magnus Carlsen's style, and this is the first thing that I like about the game. So he's playing against my opening, uh, and... Obviously, I'm trying to play better with the black pieces against variations like this one. And I have to say, this game has been extremely instructive as to what I should be doing. In this position, he can, of course, recapture the pawn and be equal on pawns. I mean, each side has six pawns. He will still have to develop his bishop. Or he can castle. Magnus Carlsen castled. Uh, after castles, it's clear that that's now a full pawn sacrifice as soon as black captures on b2, the bishop is going to recapture, black is going to be a pawn up permanently, 6 pawns to 5. Uh, however, in this position, uh, Levon Aronian played knight f6 first, gaining a tempo on the bishop, after bishop d3, now a takes b2, bishop takes b2, and yeah, uh, Magnus Carlsen sacrificed the pawn. Uh, Levon immediately played the move a5, simply continuing with his queenside pawn push, he has a passed pawn, an outside passed pawn, protected by this wonderful uh, f8 bishop, the other bishop could come into play, the rook is automatically defending the pawn, the queen is supporting the pawn, and visually at least it would seem that uh, black is at least better, uh, I would even say winning, and here is the move that Magnus played. After this move, I don't know, I didn't play chess back then, in 2008, uh, in 2008, but I, I, I guess the commentators who, who were annotating the game live or something had to be surprised. So, uh, you can pause the video if you'd like. If you don't know the game, I doubt you are going to spot the move. It's really hard to see. But I'm still going to give you some time if you'd like to pause. Okay, uh, so, uh, in this position, Magnus Carlsen played the move d5. And, uh, well... It's a pawn sacrifice which can be captured four different ways. That much is clear. Aronian can capture with the C pawn, with the E pawn, with the knight and with the queen. In the game he captured with the knight. Uh, let's see what happens in other cases. If C takes D5, this variation is the only one that's really easy to refute. Bishop B5 check, knight D7 and now knight E5 is eventually going to win the knight. Uh, the only move is bishop C8 and I will simply play rook C1. There's no way to get out of the pin and that's it. So the knight is going to be lost. Uh, the, second, the second variation after d5 uh, I want to look at is e takes d5. After e takes d5, uh, the win is not that clear. White is not winning. White has sacrificed the pawn and he doesn't have that much for it. He doesn't immediately win a piece. But it's still much better. Knight d4 should be the best move, putting pressure on the c6 pawn. Uh, putting pressure on black center. If c5 is ever played, then of course bishop b5 would lead to trouble, and staring at the f5 square as well. So if the bishop develops, which should be the best move, bishop b4, then you play knight f5. And now, after knight f5, black cannot castle. Uh, the best move, in fact, would be uh, would be king f8. Uh, if black castles, then you simply play knight takes g7, and if king takes g7, then queen uh, g4 check, and the knight is pinned, so obviously... Uh, black is going to be in a world of pain. After d5, uh, recapturing with the queen is also fine, also leads to a slight initiative for white, nothing major though, and 
two pawns down, but with an equal position, that's probably good enough for Magnus. In this case, he would uh, recapture one of the pawns. And the capture which Levon Aronian played after d5 is knight takes d5. And you could argue that the taking with the queen is the best option. Queen takes d5 seems to be the most favorable for black, leading to an equal position. And all the other captures lead to an advantage for Magnus. And in this case, after knight takes d5, uh, we have knight e5, knight f6, queen a4, putting pressure on c6, bishop b4, you don't really have time to defend against that. And now knight c6, bishop c6, queen c6, check, king e7. And here, uh, who wouldn't want to be a pawn down in this position? I mean, you sacrifice the pawn, the black king is stuck on e7, you have the wonderful bishop pair, uh, both of your rooks are active, your king is perfectly safe, and from a human perspective, this position is already busted. The engine gives it as slightly more than plus one, but in reality, I think it's really, really hard to survive. And now for a great finish. I mean, it's only move 19, but it's really hard to defend this. We have rook f to d1, rook c8, queen f3, queen b6, bishop d4. And all of white's pieces are just incredibly well placed. Queen b8, bishop a6, attacking the rook, rook c to d8, bishop b7. And this is a great maneuver, uh, reducing the scope of the queen and increasing the pressure on black's position, simply restraining the, the king and preparing in some positions bishop c6, just restraining the king even further. And uh, yeah, after this, it's really hard to play for black. Uh, believe it or not, the engines after bishop b7 give it as equal. And the best move according to the engines uh, is the move e5, which already was suggested at some points, trying to restrain uh, the scope of the bishop. But Levon Aronian didn't play that. He played the move h5, trying to gain some counterplay, probably. And after Magnus played his mistake, h3, once again, e5 was the move which could have allowed Aronian to sort of save his position. But it's really hard to find a move like that, opening up extra lines towards your king. So, uh, he played h4 here, which doesn't really work. And now, rook a to b1, e5 finally was played. But in this case, it doesn't work, and it just doesn't work. So, uh, now we are going to see a tactical sequence which led to a resignation, obviously. But the point is that e5 after rook a to b1 doesn't work, because white is now able to play rook takes b4, and you can't really capture uh, on b4. The difference is that the bishop is covering the c5 square, and obviously if you play bishop c5 now, uh, the b4 bishop is going to take on c5. After e5, rook takes b4, you can now play bishop c5. So, uh, Levon Aronian should have simply taken the bishop, let's say, uh, maybe rook takes d4, I think rook takes d4 is the best move, and now rook b takes d4, and e takes d4, pawn takes d4, and this is survivable, white is much better, but not winning. And after rook takes b4, uh, Levon Aronian played a takes b4, and now this is losing, because you are allowing bishop c5 check and the, the pawn is irrelevant completely, it's important that you restrain the bishop, uh, that you restrain the king from exiting the position. Now, it's obvious that the king can no longer go to f8, so even if the king does try to run away to e8, then bishop c6 is going to be devastating. So, Levin played king e6, and now, uh, the I mean, completely counterintuitive, but incredibly strong move, which is my second favorite move of the game. If you want, you can pause once again. Uh, okay, so the move is uh, rook a1. And this move is so strong, that, and most people would miss it. The point is that you want to get your rook around. You need scope for your rook. You need checking squares. And from d1, it seems like you're restraining the king, like you're on the best file possible, but that's not really true. Let's see if, if black doesn't react here. Let's say he plays something, something stupid, like rook h7. Uh, rook a6 check, which was the point of rook a1, rook d6 now, and now simply winning the position. So it's a really serious threat. So after rook a1, Levon Aronian played rook d6 in anticipation of rook a6, simply giving up the exchange. Bishop takes d6, king takes d6, queen c6 check, king e7, rook a8, and it's game over now. There's really nothing to do. Queen d6 takes, takes. Rook takes, and Levon Aronian didn't resign yet because he was hoping that his b pawn is going to queen, b3, bishop a6, knight d7, uh, trying to prevent the rook from entering the b8 square. 
but simply rook takes h4 and it doesn't work. After knight c5 attacking the bishop, there's a really simple win here and the winning move is bishop c4. This wasn't played in the game, Levan Aronian resigned with his own move and obviously now if the pawn is pushed forward, simply bishop a2 and the pawn is stopped. So this is, I think this is my favorite Magnus Carlsen game, obviously didn't see too many of them, went probably through only a hundred of his games and this one is absolutely astonishing. Firstly, he, he crushed my main defense with the black pieces, which I don't like, but he crushed it in such a fashion that, I mean, I was absolutely astonished to see the move d5 and rook a1. Those are my two favorite moves. And also, the pawn sacrifice on a3, just castling in cold blood, allowing black to take, and then immediately sacrificing the second pawn. I, yeah, let me know what you think about this game. Uh, in the, the material I give out to patrons, I'm going to analyze the key points in more detail. d5 and uh, the pawn sacrifice and the move e5 for black to see how black could have equalized. And I'm going to exploit, uh, ex uh, try to explain uh, key points in which black could have played uh, a better game. Okay, uh, let me know what you think about this game. Let me know if you think that Magnus Carlsen is going to win the Croatian uh, Grand Chess too easily, because I do. And stay tuned for more chess. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.